Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. It is the debut of Joe Michael today. Our number one prospect and the second first round pick we selected in this series. He has 99 potential and we were lucky to get him at number three overall when we did. Michael had an outstanding first year rising through double A and triple A. And now it's time to see if he can help take this rotation to the next level. He's only 19 years old, but is already the third highest rated player on this roster and has a chance to be one of our absolute best players. He's a left-handed pitcher with great strikeout stuff. He throws a fastball in the high 90s, a curveball, changeup, and we added the sweeper as well this season to give him a five-pitch mix. Michael's going to pitch in the first game we go through today, but before we get there, we do have to take care of our scouting for the first time this season. And just going through, you know, what's a strength of this team and what we have to work on right now, I am going to be focusing really on just position players this year, third baseman and corner outfielders. I'd like to get some good defenders. I'd like to get some outfielders who actually supply some power. And then third baseman is a spot where we don't really have a premier prospect at the moment. Now, we also have to keep in mind, we are going to have the number one overall pick. And we're looking to take the best player regardless of position. But as we check out the top of our board, we have a catcher and Austin Gilliand. You sneal Cruz, a left fielder, along with third baseman Julio Pena. So we're obviously going to be scouting these players in particular to find who's going to be that ultimate number one pick for us. So we're going to start off with left fielders in the international region, along with third baseman international. This is one of the biggest moments in the series to this point, everybody. Welcome in to episode two of season four. Joe Michael opens in the Oakland Coliseum in our first game against the Minnesota Twins. He was the number one prospect for basically all of last season. I believe he's listed as the number two right now. Or no, actually, number one MLB. They still have Aaron Don as number six MLB. And this is a list here I'm going to want to save for later. The top prospects here are getting very intriguing. A couple of the pitchers on here aren't all that close, but there's a lot to like with what we've done three drafts into this series. And now holding the number one pick for this season as well. But Joe Michael makes his Major League debut against uh, what I think is going to be a pretty solid lineup here for Minnesota. Adolfo Cairo leads off, and he is one of the younger players here on this Twins roster, hit 29 homers last season. And it's time, everybody, for the Joe Michael era to begin. First pitch. Down and in, ball one with the four-seam fastball. Michael's coming off a very good spring training where he continued to strike out big league hitters with relative ease, but did a better job of keeping the ball in the ballpark and just pitching the way he needs at the major league level. Cairo 2-0 and and clipping the outside. There's Michael's two-seam fastball. One thing we run into trouble with at times with Joe is the off-speed command. And oftentimes I've seen the, the fastball be a pitch you've got to throw over and over again because the other stuff is just not getting over. But we also saw in spring training the sweeper was an immediate weapon for him. Two and two. On the ground, Guerrero at third, handles it, and Michael records his first out in the bigs. But this is a really good Twins lineup we're going to see. Carlos Correa, Byron Buxton. They've also brought in Joey Meneses. Maybe it's not like the, the best uh, lineup here, but I think that it's probably stronger than the one in real life right now. Here's Austin Martin who came over in the Jose Barrios trade for the Twins. Used to be a, a very highly regarded prospect. Has slid down the ranks pretty steep. Michael gets him out in front, and now a 1-2 count. We're going to continue the challenge with the fastball. Got him looking! The first career strikeout for Joe Michael comes on that fastball that got him here in just over a season. That'll bring up Carlos Correa. 
Called bottom of the zone, strike one. That's the two-seamer. And getting ahead with the 98-mile-per-hour fastball. Two strikes on Carlos Correa. Down and away, ball two to Correa. Backing him off the plate now, three and two, three straight misses. Going back to the heat now with the count full, and he misses way upstairs. Walks and homers are the primary concern for Michael. Will he be able to put together the command he needs at the big league level? And are the home runs going to be a problem? You know, last year they really weren't. Spring training, they really weren't. Buxton now looking at a change-up low for ball one. And a drive to left field. Buxton gone. A two-run shot. On a two-seam fastball, Joe Michaels giving up the first homer of his big league career. Byron Buxton. I really wanted to be careful throwing fastballs to Correa and Buxton. And that is why. Yeah, you're not going to get away with missing your fastball there. Now we'll see how Michael responds to that, and hopefully he can recover. As I've talked about, his stamina is off the charts, so he can pitch, you know, 110, 120 pitches, no problem. It comes down to, is he effective? Is he getting outs? And that was a, a rough intro to the majors. And for the Twins, they're going to throw out Chris Paddock today, and he's put together some pretty good numbers here in Minnesota, but uh, a very low strikeout count. Luis Arise is going to lead things off for us. The former twin playing against the Twins. Popped this one up, and an ugly swing starts us off with a pop-out. Now, I've moved up Aaron Don in the batting order today. Tyler Soderstrom could have used the day off, so he's going to get it, and Josh Baez is going to play in his place. And so Aaron Don goes up to two with him off to a hot start in that first series. And on two pitches, Austin Martin records two outs. We actually have looked at some pitches here, but Paddock's ahead of Vladdy 0-2. And it's a five-pitch first inning for Chris Paddock. Putting Joe Michael back on the mound here in a hurry. Now he'll face Jorge Polanco in the bottom of this Twins order. After 20 pitches in the first. There it is. Buy him at 98. You know, I'm so used to throwing the fastball with him, and I think it's going to be his best pitch, but I wonder, like... You know, with two strikes, I want to go off speed. Does he have the off speed to be effective yet? Or does he rely on that fastball for too much? You know, that was in my head before Buxton ever went yard. And then he took a fastball out. On the ground. And a base hit for Jorge Polanco. Jose Miranda. And the fastball is in there. Right now, he's got decent confidence in the fastball and the changeup, so hoping to use that pitch a lot as he gets ahead of Miranda. Just off the outside corner, a pretty good pitch. We'll take that one. And the 1 2 is on the ground and through the right side. Nice hitting by Miranda on a pitch that I don't believe even hit the zone. That's three hits allowed now for Joe Michael. As he gives up the homer and now faces a jam, here is Ryan Jeffers. Just looking for a 68 clutch and some power against lefties as well. Ball. Down, ball one. And a base hit to center. Polanco's going to be waved around and he will score. It's 3-0 Minnesota and Joe Michaels having a really rough Major League debut. And that's not even a bad pitch. Like, two of the hits in this inning are on pitches that you probably don't expect to give up uh, a whole lot. That's a sweeper away. Now, Larnick's going to line it to Gordon and right as the runner moves up to third base. So, already three across for Minnesota. And Michael facing Cairo with one down, runners at the corners. 
Hammered down the line. Going foul. Missed that one by a little bit. Change up low, and it's a 3-1 count with Martin on deck. And upstairs, a walk. So we're looking at three or four hits, two walks already for Joe Michael. He's only recorded four outs. Austin Martin, one down. Grounds it. We need this one. Sweeney to a rise. We get the double play. That was big. I'm thinking that the changeup is going to become one of the go-to pitches today. I don't know how far that's going to carry us, but the fastball is just, he's missing over the plate way too much. So Seth Brown's going to lead us off here in the second. 182 average in that first series against the Tigers. And I think one of the early season talking points here is going to be this team's lack of right-handed bats. And when we faced the Tigers, we saw them continue to throw out their left-handed relievers. And when we got, you know, six, seven lefties out there, and most of them are not good against lefties, it really hurts the lineup. So I have started to look at possibly making a move as Brown delivers our first hit. But I'm not really sure if there's a move I like here in the short term. Now, at some point this year, it's likely we end up trading guys like Cody Bellinger, maybe Seth Brown, Paul Blackburn, and maybe those two can be used to try and get us some right-handed bats in return. Hoping to get one back here, start chipping away, as Bellinger looks at the first two. I heard uh, the rumbling of thunder here, so I, I do wonder if a rain delay could interrupt this Joe Michael debut. That's a base hit, crack to center. Brown into second base. First two on here for the Yays in the second. And that's going to bring us to Trey Sweeney. Fly ball, shallow center. And it looks like Correa is going to handle this one for the first out. And now the former Minnesota twin, it's Nick Gordon. Couple homers of the solo variety in the series against the Tigers. And now two on. Now I I did pinch hit him in the last game, but he's got outstanding bat and clutch. When there are runners on, he's the guy you want up, not a guy you substitute out. Gordon cracks center field. Buxton on the chase, and even he can't get there. Now we're scrambling, waving the runner home. He will score just in time. Gordon scorches the double against his former team. And the rally continues. Extra playing time here for Josh Baez. I do want to stay patient to start this year as far as like, all right, we need the right-handed bat for sure. But we have a couple guys on the bench, and they have a chance to possibly become mainstays, depending on how they play. Baez with a drive out to deep right field, and this one's run down. A very productive sacrifice fly. 3-2. So part of me wants to stay patient because I don't want to trade for somebody, say an outfielder, that takes away playing time from Baez. He's like 23 years old. I want to see if he can do this on his own. And then you have Geloff, who I also want to get some playing time. So it's got to be the right move. And uh, I found one player in particular, but there was just so much overlap with the skill set with Baez, and it felt like it would just be taking away his opportunity i'll show you after this but i ran like the player finder love that feature oh we almost tied the game i was looking for players who hit lefties well and can play in the outfield and our right-handed bats almost swung at that because the outfield seems like one of the easier places for us to get guys playing time if we end up moving bellinger if we end up moving seth brown now you need new starters. Ooh, contact swing and Correa gloves it. But hey, we get a couple back for Joe Michael. I don't know if that helps out pitcher confidence at all. But uh, it's a one-run game now. Let's see if he can reset himself against the heart of the order. So he's been able to hit that fastball at the bottom of the zone so far. Curveball, not really an option. Two-seamer, they've hit that too hard. So we're looking at, I think, fastball, changeup, sweeper. Can that trio 
rebuild this game. Nope. Down and in, ball two. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a pitch we're throwing for a, a strike here early in the count. Lifted, and Guerrero is over for a look game. Gets it. I think here you've got to start, you know, forcing Buxton to uh, show a little discipline here, and we're going to go change up to start things off. Strike one. Can we use that change up to uh, get two strikes? Sure can. Nope. Off the plate, but close, and Buxton takes ball two. The 2-2 two -two from Joe Michael. Hammered down the line. It'll turn foul. But another good swing from Byron Buxton. The 2-2. Two -two. High. Too high. The two strike pitches not competitive enough. Full count now against Buxton. Does he go? Yes, he does. Strike three. Had to throw a bunch of pitches in that at bat, but got to be careful against Byron Buxton. If we can make this a 1 2 3 inning, start to feel a bit better. He's fallen behind Joey Manessas. 3 1 fastball. Misses up. No 1 2 3 inning here for Michael. He'll face Polanco. And he falls behind 2 0. We're going to have to get some action in this bullpen. Man, that's unfortunate. Miranda on deck with Michael 3-0 in there with a strike. Not the sharp Joe Michael I was hoping we'd see here in this game. But battling back against Polanco. 3-2. Popped him up. And that's at least uh, his best inning to this point. There's a base hit from Luis Arise. I wanted to be patient, but why wait when you got Arise looking at an easy fastball like that one? Arise is aboard for Aaron Don. Two triples already. Still looking for that first Major League homer. Inside ball one. I did edit Don's helmet, and I want to do a better job of editing guys' stances and pitching windups and gear before we ever see them for the first time because... A lot of guys end up with really generic looks or outdated gear or generic stance one. And I'd like your first time seeing certain guys to, to not be that and then make changes later. So, got a few guys in mind at AAA I want to get to editing a bit. Probably run like a random number generator on stances if they're going to be uh, of the generic variety. Miranda starts it, and Don beats out the fielder's choice. Paddock knows it, but Aaron Don is probably going to be our best stealing threat here. As he's uh, at 80-something speed, and they're already worried about him. They don't seem to pitch out much in this game, so... I might even be willing to run even after a couple throwovers. And there's a drive left center field. Vladdy going back, and this one is gone. Guerrero puts the A's in front. Paddock just continues to throw that low 90s fastball. He's not throwing a whole lot else. So pretty much every pitch has been something I want to swing at. For Guerrero, it's number three on the season. And we have given Joe Michael a lead. Here it is. Fastball, it's down. But still very hittable. Chopped left side. Going to be a really tough play for Martin. Slings it across the diamond, but not in time as Brown has his second hit. I mean, that's another fastball up that we should do some damage with. I'm pretty sure like all of our hits have been on fastballs and it seems to be the only thing he's throwing. I guess I'm hesitating on some of these. I'm thinking it's got to be the changeup. It's got to be the slider. 12-6. I haven't seen that pitch. There goes Seth Brown. 
Pitches up. Brown in the second, and he's thrown out. Perfect throw from Ryan Jeffers. I want to be aggressive this year on the bases, and I'm going to take chances like that. Three and two, and Bellinger reaches. That's hooking foul, and the inning does come to an end, but... Oakland hitting the ball well in this game, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has given us a lead. We do have Ken Waldachuk warming up, but 60 pitches in. Joe Michael starts off the fourth inning, and if he can get through a couple more, you know, innings allowing no more runs, I think that will just call it an up-and-down debut against uh, a pretty decent offense. Nothing wrong with giving up a homer to Byron Buxton, right? Some of this two-strike stuff is just not getting them to bite. Got him with a sweeper. What a pitch. Can't throw it better. That's number three for Joe Michael. Michael gets the first two. Now faces Trevor Larnick. And this looks to be a quick fourth. One, two, three for Joe Michael. Bottom of the fourth inning, and here is Josh Baez. Looking for that first hit of the season, but does have his first RBI. And a drive in the air to left, right at Larnick. And there's Paddock finally breaking out the 12-6. Shea Langoliers is getting the start today, giving Susak a rest. I also have Shea set to start against lefties, which will give him a chance to show off that power and... He has really good contact against lefties at the same time. Three and one to Shea. And a drive hit well to center field. Down at the warning track. And Langoliers is in with a double. Here's Luis Arise trying to bring him home. And on one pitch, he is gone. All right, fifth inning for Joe Michael. Adolfo Cairo, third trip through the order now. Well, the Chuck's still getting warm. Might want to get a, a righty up as well, just because if this inning goes sideways, well, Correa and Buxton are going to hit. But there's one. 70th pitch for Michael is down and in to Austin Martin, who's coming off a two-home run performance. Got him outside. There is a changeup. 31 balls, 41 strikes to this point for Michael. Delivering the 1 2. Martin pops up. We've seen a few pop ups now in the last couple innings. They're having trouble with the timing of it now. And coming off the 1 2 3 4, if he faces Correa with a chance to go back to back. Just inside. Some of these pitches are in pretty good spots, but they're just not biting yet. Two and one, and that's high. Buxton on deck. Already did damage in his first at bat. Michael gives up a fly ball to Gordon, and that is back to back. One, two, three innings. Going to be an actual decision to see if I want him to lead off the uh, to start off the sixth inning. So, five innings, three runs allowed. We'll take that based on how it began. Bottom five now. Aaron Dawn, base hit center field. If he's going to keep throwing fastballs here, you might as well just walk Vladdy intentionally. I got to see the percentage on how much he's thrown that four-seamer. Throws it high. Thunder continues to rumble inside of the Coliseum, and there's the slider. Maybe it was the long con here, like throwing 40 fastballs just to throw a slider to Vladdy here. And now he hammers it foul. Oh, man. One and two. There goes Don. Into right. And down. Wasn't sure what was going to happen there. Don's out by a half step. I thought it might get caught. I couldn't tell. Oh, man. That's unfortunate. For Paddock, he's thrown 60 pitches, and 37 of them have been his four-seam fastball. 
And that one could have been really damaging, but it's fouled back by Seth. That's kind of the perfect swing there. Oh, he got him. You know, I think I uh, lost track of the count there. This has been fun, though. We're placing a good pitcher, and we're, you know, getting somebody aboard every inning and having a chance to make things happen. 4-3 Oakland trying to move above 500 again. And that's going in the right. And Cairo cuts it off, and everybody just moves up a base. That'll bring up Trey Sweeney, two on and two down. There's a circle change away, trying to lay off those early in the count. Eduardo Rodriguez really pointed out that uh, issue last episode. As he's really good at just throwing his sinker and change up low. 2-0 to Sweeney. And this one's going through! Flatty waved around! He's gonna score! And the A's extend their lead. Getting hits and bunches here. This has been fun. Chris Paddock's day is done. And they bring out Louis Varland. I was wondering if they'd go lefty here. They do not. Two on, two down. Gordon versus Varland. Gordon gave us a big double earlier. Has a chance here with two on. And now gets ahead 2-1. This one is hooking foul down the left field line, and Larnick gets to it between the bullpen catchers. But Trey Sweeney adds a run for us with the 10th hit for Oakland in this game. And now a big call. Do you pitch Michael versus Buxton? We're going to leave him in. The last two innings have been really good. So we'll be careful here pitching the Buxton. By careful, I wasn't expecting that pitch, but his command of the fastball has just not been, uh, it hasn't been his day. And even on a down day, I'd say for Michael, he's got a chance to throw together a quality start. Buxton takes the low curve. Two and two from Michael. And too low on the changeup. Payoff pitch to Buxton. And he walks him. So Buxton has seen uh, the three true outcomes in this game. Home run, strikeout, walk. Not my favorite brand of baseball. Joey Manessis now. Yeah, 0-2. Now, we don't want to throw that uh, curveball in the dirt here, or Buxton's going right to second base, and he might do it anyway. Yep, change up, missed up. Got him looking. Strike three. That's number four for Joe Michael. And now Polanco will hit. On the ground. Guerrero gets it quickly. Double play. It didn't start out the way we wanted for Joe Michael. But if this is it, it is a quality start in his major league debut showing resiliency after a rough start to the game. And that's probably going to be it for him. I am very pleased with the outcome now. 5-3 Oakland, bottom of the sixth, and Baez hits again. 2-2 two two to Josh Baez. Got him on the corner. That's a tough one. Arise now, hitting with two down against Varland. Good stuff from Louis so far, and Arise sends it foul. Making Varlin work for this final out. This is how Arise at bats tend to go. Three and two. Ah, oh, got him with a fastball. We will take out Joe Michael and insert Jonathan Hernandez here in the seventh inning. See if we can take this first game from Minnesota. Fastball or sinker is in there for strike one. And popped up. Got a slider elevated and the Twins have fallen into this rut of pop-ups here in the last few innings. Jeffers now will hit. Held back. 
Does he go? No, he doesn't. Struck him out. Change up from Hernandez. That'll bring up Trevor Larnick. Good sinker inside. Yeah, he's missing all over the place too. But it's working. Oh, and two. Got him looking. Lights out stuff from Jonathan Hernandez. Varlin's going to stay in there for Minnesota. He's done well to this point. Hey, down below, Duarte went yard. Remember him from last episode? I was intrigued just because he was like a day one, 18-year-old big league player. Don lines it to Correa. I've enjoyed hitting with him so far. Even some of the outs, you know, you can live with them. Getting a lot of hits at the same time. A blast to left field. Guerrero back and gone. His second multi-home run game with the A's this season. They've come in pairs. And it's more fitting when it happens against the Twins. 6-3 Oakland. And Bellinger stays productive. Slaps one the other way. And this will be his third hit of the night. And it's in the air center field. Buxton going back with a jog. And he's got it. And now we're getting the rain delay, it appears. So I'm not sure. I just said I wanted to put in a new pitcher. If I hit keep. It should be Alex Reyes. There we go. He's the setup man here for Acevedo. At least when you have Buxton and Correa coming up soon. I don't want to have uh, Victor Gonzalez in the game. Strike two on Adolfo Cairo. And now the count runs full with Martin on deck. Struck him out. Big wave there from Martin. He falls behind, or no, counts evened up now. And he waves at the 12-6. A pair of Ks for Reyes here as he'll face Correa with the bases empty. A strike away. Lifted right center, and Correa just missed it. Gordon takes us, bottom of the eighth inning. Jorge Alcala in the game for the Twins as... We look to take at least a three-run game into the ninth. And Gordon sends one the other way. Another extra base hit for Oakland. Bangs up against the fence, and Gordon has a leadoff double. So will this be a save situation for Acevedo? Josh Baez, 0 for 2. Got two guys getting warm. The score will dictate who enters the game. Three and two to Josh Baez. Langoliers waiting for his chance. Walked him. Baez reaches for first or second time. I forget if he walked earlier. I know he had a sacrifice. I think that's his first time aboard. Two on now. Nobody down. Shea Langoliers. Alcala two and one. Got a fastball in there and Shea fouls it off. A little more velocity than Varland and Paddock. Two and two. Strike three. Arise will hit now with two aboard. Up the middle. Arise sends it through. Bellinger waved around. He will score. Four run game. We can sit down Domingo Acevedo. Aaron Don will hit. Still two on, one down here in the eighth. Dawn hits it hard. Sliding stop by Correa to get the one. 
You got to walk him here, right? You can't pitch to Vladdy. And they're going to. Two homers on the day for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And now lifted for Buxton, who comes in to end the eighth. And Zach Jackson is going to enter as we look to close out a big win here against the Twins. Strike two to Byron Buxton. And struck him out with a slider. Sent to right field and Manessas should have extra bases. Doesn't have great speed. He'll try to leg this out on his way into second base safely. And now 2-0 to Jorge Polanco. Always seems to be something here with Jackson. 3-0. Miranda is on deck. There's the changeup over. And he walks him on five pitches. So Minnesota with a chance now to cut into this lead. Miranda's up. Missed inside. Could use a call like that one. There we go. One of the outside. Got the inside corner instead. Just low. And struck him out with the fastball. That's two for Jackson. And now Ryan Jeffers trying to continue the comeback attempt for Minnesota. Got the inside. 0-2 oh from Zach Jackson. Missed away. And struck him out. The A's win it 7-3. Joe Michael in his Major League debut goes six innings, allows just three, and picks up a win and a quality start. Although it was uh, an interesting one. Minnesota took the early advantage, but after their early offensive showcase, they really couldn't manage anything after the second inning or so. They had, I don't know what it was, one hit in like the last five innings? I was like watching the Twins offense in real life. Man, three runs on five hits. Probably didn't strike out enough. Nope, they struck out 11 times. Yeah, this game is so realistic. So Michael ends up going six, gave up four hits, four walks, struck out four. He wasn't at his best and still gave us a pretty decent outing. All right, we've gone five games into the year. Everybody in the rotation has gotten a start. We're going to start speeding things up here a little bit, but I did want to show you what I was taking a look at here using the player search feature. I definitely think we're going to need to get a right-handed bat at some point this year, and one young player that caught my attention was Cubs center fielder Brennan Davis, who is only 26 years old, has a nice well-rounded skill set, and has had a little success at the major league level. The issue is, is he more intriguing than Josh Baez. And at this point, I want to play Baez. But maybe at some point, there will be room for possibly both. Another player who caught my attention is Oscar Gonzalez, who's down at AAA right now for Cleveland. And he does have really good contact skills. I'm surprised he's not at the big league level there, but he'd be somebody else I'd be interested in acquiring. Otherwise, if you go down the AAA and see who is down there, you have some guys who are relatively close, but who's going to make a huge impact? I'm not sure anybody is all that prepared to right now. I'd love to see Logan Davidson take that leap, but I've also wanted to see it for three years. Miguel Cabrera, I just don't think is ready because his defense and durability is going to keep him from not only being an everyday player, but basically being positionless. So ultimately right now, I'm not going to rush into finding a solution, hoping that, you know, somebody on the big league bench can take off. But, you know, say two months down the road, we're somewhat competitive and maybe it makes sense to go acquire somebody. Then, you know, it's a different conversation right now. 
if we end up being flawed by design just so we can get, you know, our best players out there and certain guys playing time, it's just going to be something we deal with for the short term. I mentioned Henry Vasquez pretty much every episode recently, and he put together a seven-inning debut this year starting for AAA. I have him in the rotation because maybe he could be a big league starter, but I do think that in the bullpen he would have a chance to make an impact, maybe even this year. But I feel like if he's pitching at uh, AAA as a starter, then uh, he has more chances to rack up numbers and maybe take his game to the next level just with more playing time that way. He'll pitch a lot more innings. But why don't we get into our first bit of simulating this year and a 7-3 game. Gordon has two homers, make it three. I'm going to pass on this one as we do lose the next day to Minnesota. Three homers given up for Oakland, and looks like Soroka had himself a rough outing. And the Twins dominate those last two games to take the series and send us to three and four. Thirteen runs allowed, are you kidding me? Three more homers for Minnesota, like six doubles. Now Mitch Keller goes four innings, giving up two, and it was Kyle Muller who got rocks, giving up five, and... One and one-third innings. Jeez, has it really come to this? Fujinami is now pitching at double-A for St. Louis. We face him, actually, today. But I was wanting to pitch with Henry Vazquez today. Just how close is the 19-year-old starter? Well, let's start number two for him against the Oklahoma City Dodgers. Vasquez with a good fastball changeup combination. He actually has really good control of both of those pitches. Last year, he did a really good job racking up strikeouts, and I wish they would keep the historic minor league statistics so you could track a guy's progress and see what he did at certain levels and if it translates. But he does have a five pitch mix. Fastball changeup seems to be kind of the go to. And this one's on the ground to third base. And quickly one down. Oh, that one sounded bad. Way out to right field and off the base of the wall. That is a one-out double for Alex Freeland. Vasquez does not have overpowering velocity or anything. He's going to top out around 95 miles per hour. But his K per nine is his calling card right now. It is an 80. It is higher than Joe Michaels at the moment. And what I like about his skill set is outside of hit per nine, everything is in a pretty good spot. And although he's a 76 overall with C potential, that potential being a 77, I feel like that can still play in a rotation or at least contribute in a bullpen. I mean, Paul Blackburn is what, five points lower than him right now and has similar hit per nine? Maybe Vasquez is not that far away. The 0-2 on the ground, and the runner will take off for third base as it finds its way through. It was so slow, I was sure somebody was going to get to it. Kyle Lewis now with the Dodgers, and again grounded to third base. No way you get two there, so a run scores. And now C.J. Crone is playing down at double-A as well. All right, then. Two down. Vasquez delivers a change-up at the outside corner. And quickly ahead of Crone 0-2. And struck him out with a change-up away. Popped him up this time as we start off the second inning with a quick out. And a line drive that's speared at second base. Now suddenly falling behind the batter 3-0 and and walking him on four pitches that weren't all that close. And a fly ball right field and this one is playable. Better inning this time for Henry Vasquez as we go to the third. And 26 pitches in. Change up. Got him again. Strike three. Trying to figure out how to use this K-9 to uh, 
our advantage in what the go-to pitch is, and maybe it's this one. Another swing and miss. Got to use the fastball to uh, get him off balance in the first place, right? Left center and shallow. This one is run down. Hard hit through the infield, and another hit given up to Miguel Vargas. Haven't had a 1-2-3 inning quite yet. Kyle Lewis again hitting. One on. Just clipping the inside edge. And buy him at 94. Let's see that change up again, if that'll get the job done. Not this time. Missed inside, and the count now running full on Lewis. The 3-2 is lined fair down the line and into the corner. Lewis will have extras. They'll wave the runner around, and the throw will not actually happen. It's a 2-0 ball game. Nice battle there for Kyle Lewis. Ooh, be careful with that fastball there over the plate. Two and two on Crone. Change up gets him to ground this time. To short. And he's out. Vasquez also has very good stamina, so he can go late into games. He went seven innings in the opening day start here at AAA. But now in the fourth, already 50 plus pitches in. I don't know if he's going to be making it uh, out of the fifth inning at this rate. Tried to go front door slider. That one missed. Count three and one on Pajes as he grounds it onto short. Off the glove and no play. Base hit. And another full count. Having trouble getting these outs quickly now. Three and two. Lewis goes around and strikes out on the fastball. He's got this sinker, but I think with it being his R1 pitch, it's kind of more of a... Well, it's going to be a ground ball double play here, but not one of his uh, go-to pitches. Usually it's like the X is the primary and circle, but uh, that's why you want the sinker right there to get those nice ground ball double plays. And now Las Vegas has tacked on four runs, so a little less pressure on Vasquez as we push on into the fifth inning. A Logan Davidson double and a Jeremy Ironman triple gave us those runs. We're up by two. Changeup's been that strikeout pitch, and it does it again. You know, some guys, based on their skill set or what pitches they have, they might be a better fit as starters or reliever. But uh, I do feel like Vasquez could definitely be a starter. I think that... The fastball changeup combination, I think, is promising. He does have good strikeout stuff. Stamina to go with it. And he was meant to be a starter, so him playing reliever would just be like wanting him at the bigs and there isn't room in the rotation, so we'll just get him innings in the bullpen. Where he would have pretty good flexibility to be like a multi-inning guy, I feel. This feels like a skill set to me that could go out and get you a couple really good innings when you need them. Back through the middle and out here in the fifth. So we'll see if we can do what uh, we did with Michael earlier. Kind of give up some early runs and struggle a bit, but put it together and go six. Vasquez, 79 pitches in and Vargas is two for two on the day. Which means he's due for an out, and he doesn't get out. That's going to be extras. Vargas around first. He will be in with a double. See how long they let him go here. But last time it was a, a tough battle that Lewis won. That put OKC up 2-0. Runner stays put, and the shortstop makes the play. That one is off the glove at third base. Again, the runner stays put. And C.J. Crone legs out an infield single. So there have just been a few ground balls a little too far out of reach to actually make a decent play on. And a changeup that's lined to second base for out number two. 
Can we get one more? Brandon Lewis is the batter. Stamina still in a good spot. But definitely starting to elevate a few of these pitches. There's a ground ball, and it's again off the glove. Like, how many of those infield singles have we had today? This is unreal. This is a statistical anomaly. I got to see how many it is. I hope the pitching analysis will let us know. Weekly hit outs or something. This one is sent to the gap. Are you kidding me? Oh, that is frustrating. A couple of runs are going to come around, and the bases will clear out. A three-run double. And that's the way baseball goes sometimes. You can just miss a play by a couple inches, and then you have to pitch to one more guy and you give up five runs as opposed to two. 60% strikes. He gave up four hits on the two-seamer, two on the slider. Maybe when I'm editing this down, I can count how many infield hits there were, but it doesn't tell me here. Well, that didn't go so well. Let's go back to the majors now. We kick off a series against Cleveland. Paul Blackburn does suffer bruised ribs in this game, and we win 2-1. to one. Angels are offering us a trade. Cody Bellinger for Jose Azacar. C potential, 73 overall and 29 years old. He is a righty, but uh, no, we're not going to make that deal. Does play good defense, does have good plate vision, but... No. Ooh, we have a chance to win our very first series now, and Domingo Acevedo is in for the save. We got to get into this one. Andres Jimenez leads off for Cleveland, hitting fourth. I like the camera here. It's very uh, zoomed in, it feels, here in Cleveland. I feel like I'm at the game right now. I'm so close. Lifted foul over the dugout in two strikes now on Jimenez. Struck him out. There's one for Acevedo. Josh Bell has a double and a single already. And tore it up when he was with my Rockies in that franchise. Strike at the knees at 92. He's one for eight career against Acevedo. On the outside corner. What a pitch. The 0-2 to Josh Bell. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Two quick strikeouts, and it's all up to Christian Arroyo, who spent last year with us before being traded to Cleveland. And got a good one there. Fouled it right back. Pulled it foul now, and he falls behind just like the previous batters. The 0-2. 0-2 to Arroyo. Wow, that was a really good pitch. Acevedo is feeling it in this one. Try it again. Let's see if we can get him chasing. And he holds back against the slider. Did he go this time? Yes, he does. Game over. A's win. And take their first series of the season against the Guardians. Luis Medina, six and a third innings, nine strikeouts, one earned run. He did walk five, but a very good win for him. Aaron Don has a pair of hits. Trey Sweeney goes yard. It's a 5-4 win for the good guys. Oh, no, not again. No. Miguel Cabrera, broken forearm out two to three months. I have him DHing. Wow. Wow. He's just not holding up right now, and that's going to be the ultimate factor in determining how quickly he's able to develop. This is a really big concern. He opened last year with a similar injury, missing two to three months. To start the year, he was 8 for 28, on base percentage near 400, had a home run, was hitting the ball pretty well. That durability just cannot come up quick enough. And that's something I have to pay a lot more attention to when we're adding in new players. So why don't we check out the players that are in this draft class this year. We spent the first week scouting left fielders and third basemen. 
I'll also have somebody just specifically scout Austin Gillian to have the data on the number one catcher. And we're going to take whoever I think is the best player for that spot. We'll also scout Randy McIntosh, 22-year-old, could be a little further along than a lot of other prospects. Julio Pena, 31%. We have him fifth on the board right now. And it's just too early to get too excited, but it looks like his offense is exceptional and defense leaves a, a lot to be desired. Yusneel Cruz was number two on the MLB board, but he's already fallen to 22 on ours as his defense also looks to be underwhelming and the offense, you know, has a chance to be pretty good, but I'd like to take a more well-rounded player at the top, of course. But if we want to find out more information about these top third basemen, there is also Ahmad Rock. He's from Texas, 19 years old, and looks like defense is more his calling card. Bruce Bell from Illinois. Well, these ranges are really wide, but his offense has a chance to be pretty special, and the defense as well. He's somebody we absolutely need to scout. And then as we move out to the outfield, who fits maybe for the, the next picks? Maybe this is too early as uh, Rich Cervone is 23rd on our board right now, but does seem to have a very well-rounded offensive skill set with plus defense as well. I really want to bring in some right-handed outfielders, but it, it's not going to be something I force here because anybody we draft, realistically speaking, we have to assume is three to four years away. And if we have to like solve this right-handed problem, it's going to be more with uh, veterans than it is young players. But regardless, we do need, I think, more skill set variety in the outfield. I want to get some guys, you know, that corner outfielder that can hit 30 home runs. Where is that guy? We don't have him right now. I'll have a lot of interest here in scouting someone like Forrest Battle. He's 23 years old, so you get that tighter spread in the ratings. And it looks like he's a switch hitting power outfielder, but does seem to be a little one dimensional, like uh, kind of like a switch hitting Luis Estrella skill set wise. It's power and speed. And ultimately, I'm having trouble just finding this skill set. I think I might actually have to focus a lot more on just discovery this year because I need more options. All right, we're going to go through Joe Michael's second start today, but I'm not going to play with Michael this time. I like to do a player lock game with Aaron Don. Absolutely on a tear right now. It's fun looking at this lineup and not seeing like five snowflakes there with the entire team in a cold streak. I think we're actually hitting the ball pretty well right now, and that first game we went through today was uh, refreshing. It felt like a very different team than we're used to. So let's jump into this one then. And it's a scoreless game as we go to the first batter of the day for Cleveland, Stephen Kwan. Joe Michael facing the lefty, and it's lined right at dawn. Still looking for that first home run, but still has a 930 OPS even without it. As he's been uh, racking up extra base hits, has three doubles, a couple of triples, and slices one foul down the left field line. Seems like he's got a lot of multi-hit games already here in the first ten, first nine. One ball, one strike. Probably not going to keep him hitting seventh at the rate he's succeeding. Oh, at the knees, strike three. That looked low for some reason to me. Six to nothing, what is going on? Kyle Muller is out there, Joe Michael's nowhere to be seen. And that's gonna be maybe Sweeney's ball. Take it. I'm glad he was on the same page as me. So Michael again gave up the early runs. It was six this time and three and two thirds. Let's see, Cleveland did have two homers, Jose Ramirez and Royce Lewis. Three homers allowed then to this point for Joe Michael. So he just wasn't able to figure it out this time and recover. Five runs in the third, didn't make it much further. We only have one hit to this point and Don cracks one foul. Gotta start somewhere, right? It's six to nothing. Three and two now, trying to get aboard for Trey Sweeney. 
And it's a walk to Don here in the fifth. Trey hitting 200, just a 573 OPS. Seems like him and Soderstrom are both kind of quiet offensively to start the year. And that's ball four, loading the bases for the nine hitting Daniel Susak. 0 2 count. Can he fix this? He chops it. Charged by Ramirez, gets the out at second and safe at first with a run scoring. Arise is only hitting 237, very disappointing by his standards. 0 2 now, facing Daniel Espino. And grounds this one on to second base for a routine play. Royce Lewis is two for two. Muller delivers an 0-2 pitch, and it's cracked to deep left field. Don into the gap. Gets there with ease. And it's only getting worse. Eight to one. So Cleveland looking to take the final game of this three-game series. We have two hits. What are we supposed to do with two hits? All right, they could stop any time now. It's 12 to two and the bases are juiced. Alex Reyes trying to get out of this mess and it's flied for Don and that's basically an automatic run. But here's the strength of his arm at this point. Well, there was no winning this game, but at least we take the series. But uh. I am a little concerned right now with this start for Joe Michael and just, you know, that first game didn't go as cleanly as we would have liked. And then, you know, the same thing kind of happened, but worse this time around. Five and five right now after 10 games. Yeah, I knew Michael wasn't going to have a very good fit, but it's around his ERA of 8.3. He's given up a couple home runs already. Looks like three and nine and two third innings. The team's hit leaders right now are Vladdy, Gordon, and Aaron Don. But Gordon and Guerrero each have four homers at this point, and Gordon is the RBI leader and the current batting average leader as well with a 472 on base. Cody Bellinger's doing a pretty good job as well. Sweeney is having his struggles. Baez, Susak, Soderstrom... Yeah, it's disappointing to see Soderstrom's numbers here after 10 games, especially after that contract. I mean, he's got six hits, 13 strikeouts, but it's a very, very small sample size at this point. Who's finding early season AAA success? Well, Denzel Clark has 12 hits. Deshaun Knowles has 10. Jeremy Ironman's doing all right, and he's somebody now out of options. Might get called up and down throughout the season. Gunnar Hoagland has thrown 13 really solid innings to this point with a 1.38 ERA. He is a 74 overall. But overall, the season is very young and we're just getting underway. Debuts are now done for Aaron Don and Joe Michael. And we'll start to pick up the pace a little bit here in year four and see if the A's are truly ready to take that next step and become closer to a 500 and maybe a wild card contending team at some point. But leave your feedback down below. What do you think we should focus on here in the early stages of the season while we're only 10 games in? And I'll do my best to uh, read that feedback and put out episodes here in season four that everybody is excited about. Thank you for all your support. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll have more of the Ace franchise coming your way soon. Have a great day.